Do you ever get in your car and tell yourself, hey, you know, I want some extra bass. You know, I heard that guy's car riding down the road and it was booming and I want to build a box. But tell yourself, I want to build a box, but I really don't know where to start. Since you clicked on my video, I'm going to share with you a few tips, uh, a couple techniques, and a few methods, formulas that you can use on building a speaker box for your vehicle so you can get a little bit more excitement out of your ride. <laughs> Finally! So today we're actually just going to talk about a few things um, you should know before you actually get into the process of building your speaker box. I'm not going to overload your brain because I just want you to understand there are a few things you need to consider before you get into building your speaker box and simple basics um, so you don't get um, discouraged or not motivated to go ahead and just give it a shot. Don't be scared to uh, accept the fact that your first speaker box that you build, it may not sound that good. What? Uh, we've all been there done that me myself and i'm pretty sure other builders but there are some things that you know you just have to understand and make sure that you do it in order for you to learn so if you really like building speaker boxes after your first one the next one you're going to try something new and may sound better the third one you do you may do something different and it may sound worse but further and further you keep going you're going to end up being a pro building speaker boxes and guess what people are going to be hitting you up asking you for advice um, asking you to build speaker boxes and you got to start somewhere right i sit here and tell you how many messages i get a day people asking for advice on what speakers they should buy what box should they go into um you'd be amazed so once you start building speaker boxes and you're posting it on your social medias man you're gonna get unlimited messages all day asking for advice from people you know people you don't know but you don't want to sound crazy and not know what you're talking about so it all starts here watching this video because um you may learn something i hope so okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. today we're actually just gonna explain um and give you a few tips um, on building your first speaker box and i really recommend for you guys to start off if this is your first time building a speaker box build a sealed box you're gonna go ahead and need to design a box for your subwoofer this is a sundown sub it is your pretty much your entry level sub that they make um, pretty much anybody that's first time building boxes they may buy a big sub or a small sub but either way every sub needs a box that is required or that it needs for it to do what it's got to do every single sub does need a certain amount of airspace but there are are air spaces uh, formulas that just work good with pretty much every single sub. If you go ahead and just build a simple sealed box, what we're actually just discussing here today, you know, for the beginners, um, every single sub pretty much works good in the trunk of a car or underneath um, the seat of a truck in a one cubic foot um, enclosure. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Um, if your math is off by a little bit because this is your first time, uh, you know one cubic foot is always the best way to go you'll get good bass response from it You'll get some nice low notes and some nice high notes because it's in the trunk um, And it's just building pressure in there. You're not hearing the cone noise from the sub But it, it is producing some really good bass that you will be happy with so I just said you know You need a cubic foot for your subwoofer enclosure, but how do you figure out? Let's go ahead and get on the iPad and I'm gonna show you real quick what I'm about to share with you guys is a very key point to beginners uh, for you to let technology um, and if you have an Apple program or Windows laptop or something let that do all the hard work for you guys and you just sit back and just learn from it but let the new technology um, do all the work for you bro what are you talking about man? this website that I am gonna share with you guys right now is gonna be a lifesaver when it comes to beginner box builders simply on your address bar go to the 12volt.com and then you're going to come to this home page right here you're going to see so much stuff this is a lifesaver absolutely free and very useful to you myself and pretty much everybody other people use all kinds of other stuff but let's listen this is an absolute free one and i live by this guy and even till this day i've been using it for years and it's you're never get to your home page right here on the website www.the12volt.com and you'll see all these um you know things that you can select from right here and we're just gonna go ahead and find the one that says sub box calculators. We're gonna go ahead and click that guy. So we made it to this part of the website. You're gonna simply wanna go to the top where all the menus are at and you're gonna wanna find the one that says sub box calculators and go ahead and hit it. 
then it's gonna take you to this part of the website that says subwoofer enclosure calculators, fraction to decibels, parallel series port length, and volume. Here you're gonna see, you know, how to wire subs, very useful, uh, and different series or parallel, but that's for another video. But we're gonna wanna get to the part right here. Remember, we're here to talk about simple box building. Sealed box is the easiest, most simple way to build a box. That's what we are here for. This is why we are making this video. For you to understand building a simple sealed box. And then from there, if you go ahead and love it, man, try new stuff out and you'll get into building all these other different types of boxes. But that's for a whole nother video. So today, let's get back into the sealed box building. So we made it to the volume calculator rec rectangular square enclosure. This is where you want to be at. This is right here. It's going to determine um, your how much airspace you need um, for you to get for your sub and the size that you need in the trunk of your car or underneath the seat. And remember, I told you guys subs work good and one cubic feet and that's what we're trying to look for right now. And we're going to go ahead and crunch some fantasy numbers to get to that one cubic uh, foot space that we need um, so you guys can see how the program works and what numbers you need to crunch so you guys can get an idea when you guys want to give the attempt to building a speaker box in your car man you go ahead and know exactly what to do and try to find the numbers that you want or if you want to try to push the limits and you know look up um, box specs for your subs man you can just go on the internet and simply just look up uh, the subwoofer then type in owner's manual and then you'll find the recommendation uh, subwoofer enclosures and that'll help you out a little bit more to get that fine tuning but one cubic foot is always the best way to go if you're just going to build a simple sealed box in the trunk or underneath your seat so we'll pretend we're building a box for uh, one single 12. Um, we're just going to go ahead and crunch the number we'll say 16. Uh, we'll go ahead and say 16 and then we'll go ahead and say the depth. Uh, we'll say um, eight inches. And then the thickness of the wood is 0.75 because that is three quarter. So you have to turn in a fraction into decibel. You go ahead and hit that equal. And let's see what it gives us. Ooh, you see, we're not quite there yet. So this is when you actually got to sit here and crunch the numbers till you get to your airspace you're trying to achieve. Since our goal is to get to one cubic foot, we need to tweak the box a little bit in uh, dimensions in order for us to go ahead and get that one cubic foot size that we need. You hit the clear, we'll start all over. So we'll go ahead and say 16. Then maybe we'll go ahead and say 18 for the height. And then the depth, we'll just go ahead and say 10. Thickness of the wood, 0.75, because it's three quarters. Let's hit that equal. Drum roll, please. Boom, 1.17. It gave us 1.17 1, 1 and that is excellent because um, the extra 0.17 airspace that's left over, man, that is good because you still have to consider the fact, um, the magnet size, um, if you put braces in it or whatever. Um, but don't think about that right now. Don't even think about that right now. You will get into that part of building boxes later on in the future. 1.17 is not that bad at all. Um, you know, you can just keep going forward with that. But if you were in the range from say one point uh, one and a half cubic foot to two cubic feet, then you'd be in jeopardy because then it's not gonna, you know, give the, the airspace for it to really just play a, a good range of notes. It'll be more dominant on the low notes. It still hits some high bass, but you know, for ordinary music that you just want to listen to, uh, whether it's rock, rap, or whatever, uh, man, it is going to do what it's do in the one cubic foot area. 1.17, it is perfect for it. And remember, we're here not to get fancy or build a, you know, a big professional speaker box. We're here for you to understand basics in order for you guys to build your very first speaker box. And your very first speaker box should always be a, be a sealed box. So now we got our formula. We got our dimensions. We got this and that. What do we do next? We figure out our cut list for our speaker box. This is the part where beginner box builders get lost and get a little bit confused. And what I'm about to share with you it is something very good. Um, I wish someone would have shared it with me when I started building boxes, but we live and we learn. And here we are, we got YouTube to go ahead and give us a hand with that. And I'm here to give you guys a hand with it. So let's get into it. Having your cut list already ready to rock and roll, 
um, so when you start building your box is always very good to have you know trying to crunch numbers from the top of your head oh, it's never gonna work you're gonna get confused you're gonna cut pieces shorter you're gonna get forget dimensions and then you have to go back and do extra work so always go ahead and jot down your design your cut list and as you're cutting wood check off the part the the cuts that you already made so you have everything ready to rock and roll so when you get to the assembly part that is you know go very nice and smoothly for you get yourself a piece of paper a pencil and if you have iphone whatever type of phone or if you have a calculator man you know use your calculator man don't try to crunch numbers um, from the top of your head if you're good at math i was never good at math use your calculator on your phone so our imaginary box design uh, dimensions is 16 wide 10 inches deep 18 inches high and that gives us a total of 1.17 cubic feet since it's recommended for you always to use three quarter inch wood you know um, you're going to want to go ahead and drop that number three quarter wood thick uh, converted into a decibel is 0.75 when you put both of these pieces together when you start building your box it is going to equal 1.5 because there's two pieces of three quarter put together so in order for all your pieces to always line up, you're gonna have to subtract every single dimension uh, 1.5 from it in order for you guys to go ahead and get the dimensions that you need. But you know, there's some things that you're gonna need to tweak a little bit so it fits. So let's go ahead and subtract 1.5 from every single dimension. So your initial dimensions are always gonna be external because that's what the outside uh, dimensions read on your tape measure or whatever. So you're gonna need to know what's on the inside. And on the inside, that's where the subtracting the 1.5 comes into play so obviously we got 16 inches on the external so our internal is going to be 14.5 our um, external side dimension is 10 uh, so our internal is going to be 8.5 we're going to get to this number here in a little bit um, I'm going to teach you something about that and our height is 18 inches high total and our internal dimensions is 16.5 the depth of the box um, when you start getting in more advanced boxes, you're always going to take into consideration how deep the sub is. Most entry level subs are barely, you know, six inches deep. This one, you know, for example, it is six and a quarter, you know, inches deep. So it is perfect. So it's going to, you know, just slide right inside our enclosure. Um, and our internal dimension is 8.5. So you guys should have no problem. Uh, but when you start getting into custom enclosures and you're trying to figure out air, airspace, you're going to want to squeeze, you know, the baffle back. Um, the baffle is where the speaker sits on. Um, you're going to want to scoot that back a little bit and, you know, to figure out airspace, but you still got to make sure that your sub fits inside there. But like I said, that's more advanced box building. Here we're just to here. Here we're just we're just here to talk about basic box building and not, you know, throw these words baffle or magnet deck or all that confuse you and throw you off um, and so when you start building your boxes so you don't get confused and so you just go ahead and build your box these are all the pieces that you're going to need you're going to need a front and back sides and top and bottom and you're going to need two of everything remember that two of everything front piece should be 14.5 times 16.5 your front piece of the box where your speaker is going to set into needs to be one and a half smaller so it can sit inside between the side pieces of the box and since you're putting a top and a bottom of it and you want it to sit on top of that um, you know your external you know dimensions from top to bottom um, when you have top and bottom put on it's going to be um, the 18 but when you set it inside on top of the bottom piece um, but below the top piece um, you're gonna need that guy to be 16 and a half so it sits in there perfect you want your pieces just to align right and have good uh, fitment because if you cut one shorter or one bigger you're gonna end up doing more extra work than what you got to um, but you know just if it confuses you just keep going back to you know the video rewind do whatever you got to do just for you to understand the purpose and what I just told talked about um, so it just clicks in your head so when you go to do it your execution is perfect sides of sides we're gonna go in head and say uh, 10 by 16 and a half because it is gonna sit on top of the bottom piece but it is gonna go from side to side and pretty much your top piece is always going to be the ex external dimensions of the box is 16 God, look, 16 times 10. 
so this is the formula if you guys want to go ahead and screenshot this save this if you want to build just one uh, single 12 inch speaker box for your trunk or just let it sit on the back seat of your truck whatever you want to do with it this is a very good formula um, it is with the cut list uh, airspace everything ready to rock and roll and you guys are more than free to use it but you know obviously there are people that already build boxes um, and know how to do this but there are some people that are watching this video that just want to learn man and just get simple basics on building speaker boxes and you can't get any more simpler than a sealed box with just six pieces of wood um, and a couple um, tools that you need to put it together build your speaker box right your very first time and get yourself some three quarter inch MDF you can purchase a 4x8 sheet from Lowe's or Home Depot for roughly around between $60, $70, a big 4x8 sheet. Um, me personally, um, it's always, you know, I'm always by myself out building, uh, I'm always building boxes by myself. So I always go to these uh, hardware stores or lumber uh, places to go get wood and I'm always by myself. So one trick that I actually do that I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now is... I basically just go into you know my Home Depot because that's the one that I always go to I get my cart and I go and get my big piece of 4x8 sheet you know I struggle a little bit I'm not even gonna lie to put it in the cart because it's rather heavy but I don't have no big muscles then I make my way to the part at the lumber section where they cut the wood for you what I always do is I go ahead and say if my box um, or the pieces I'm cutting out are we'll say for an example we're, for example we'll go ahead and say this pretend this is 40 I need a piece that's 45 what I do is I go over there and I tell them man I need to cut 48 so they continue to cut it out at 48 for the reason being is I can come home on my table saw and cut it to the length that I want so it could fit my box to the measurement that I want because I always come home and I measure twice and I cut once I don't put that much work on myself I go ahead and get the pieces cut there so then I can just one by one stack them inside the truck or in the trunk of the car and it makes it a lot simple for me and I don't have to have to ask no one for help or to come with me to go get this piece of wood and I got my pieces already cut so I can just come home and just get them cut to the length that I need so you went to Home Depot you got your wood um, you got it cut at Home Depot uh, you came back to your house and now it is time to put it together I am not gonna sit here and tell you how to build your speaker box um, it is something that you're just gonna have to learn to do on your own um, that does sound kind of harsh but it is a reality that everybody has to face I faced it one time uh, many many viewers that are watching this right now faced it at one time and they learned from just getting their hands on I'm have more hands-on than anything um, and you know just assembling that box together um, and you trying to figure out what piece goes where um, that is up to you you know what I'm saying what works for me may not work for you um, but you know tips that maybe you learn from this video and maybe tips you learn from another video and maybe tips you know if you're a construction worker or just are a good handyman all that's gonna click in your brain and you're just gonna tell your brain um, to you know work its magic and let your hands do all the work and then once you put it together um, you know it, it's it's not gonna be that bad you know what I'm saying it is gonna be a little bit stressful but at the end of the day if you have a square with a circle cut out and the speakers inside it man you won but let's talk about some tools that you could use that are helpful and I'm about to show you real quick and we're gonna explain everything right now and the steps that you are gonna need to take to build your box table saw is very good for step number one cutting your pieces of wood so they get come out perfect if you have to use a jigsaw because you don't have a table saw um, or a saber saw um, cut into pieces of wood is gonna be your very first step that you're gonna have to take on building your very first speaker box once you get your pieces of wood cut out on your table saw or any type of saw you're gonna need to cut out the circle for your speaker and you're gonna have to use a jigsaw to go ahead and cut that guy out after you get done using the jigsaw to cut the circle out you're gonna to want to put the box together there are two ways to go ahead and put this box together uh, one is using a staple gun with inch and a quarter quarter inch uh, staples a lot of people use brad nails but I actually like the quarter inch crown because it is very good you know I like it I, I, you can never go wrong if you do not have a staple gun and you want to do it the good old-fashioned way um, you do have a drill and some screws drywall screws um, inch and five eighths uh, coarse thread these are the very good ones to use um, you can use this uh, and your drill but you know if you're gonna go ahead and use screws I highly recommend for you to do pre-drilling maybe a countersink and then screw it in what is pre-drilling and countersinking let me show you real quick so this is the screw that we're going to use to put the box together. Let me show you what it does when you don't pre-drill. Do 
you see, it splits your wood. That right there, it splits your wood and that is no go because once that space starts booming, it's just gonna rip that apart. Let me show you how to pre-drill so you don't get no split wood and it goes in there very smoothly. So you grab your drill, since you're using a thinner screw, um, not so thin, but it's still fairly thin, you're gonna wanna get a drill bit that's not bigger than it, just probably a hair smaller. Uh, simply drill a rear hole inside there, probably not that deep, pull it out. If we were to run our screw just inside that hole, uh, you'll feel the, the screw head on top. But the way to get rid of that, you're gonna wanna get a countersink. This is a very nice countersink. They're probably like seven to $10, a Home Depot or Lowe's. Pick one up and just put the point inside the hole that you just did. And this is gonna, it's gonna create like depth for that screw hole just to go inside there. Okay, so we have our uh, pieces lined up, our screw ready to go in. There you have it. Perfect. No split, no nothing, and that's gonna be solid. Once, after you get done pre-drilling uh, and you wanna do final assembly, pick up yourself some wood glue, man. The wood glue is what actually holds the box together. The screws are in there just to hold it um, and give it a little bit extra strength, but man, you know, ain't nothing like some good glue. Type on is excellent. I always use it. Um, Gorilla Glue does work good, but this is pretty good, cheap, and it does its job. Wood glue is always a must when you build a speaker box because after a little bit of bass, um, you'll hear the the wood you know clack and make all kinds of noises. But this is what you want to go ahead and use. And if you use a lot of it, it's going to act like a seal, so you don't have to get messy and put caulking inside it. So we discuss wanting a speaker box in your car. We discuss uh, speakers, we discuss where to get the wood, we discuss how to get the formula, what websites to go, uh, what to do. I think for just a simple beginning uh, sealed box enclosure, man, we pretty much covered it a lot. Don't be scared to, you know, rewind the video back and just, uh, you know, watch it again over so you guys can understand. And if I was talking too fast or if I confused you, uh, man, watch the video again. And so when you get into the point where you want to go buy the wood, you have your speaker and you want to go ahead and give it a shot building your box, man, you are ready, um, you're confident, and you're not going to let nothing stop you. Big butt, but I hope my video actually helped you out a little bit, man. I'm not here to, you know, overwhelm you or give you more information than what you got to know or, you know, throw these extra terms or all this extra stuff. Um, along with it if it really did help you man hit that like button drop some comments uh, drop some comments what video uh, should I do next should I get really more into the detail how to do formulas other boxes um, secrets more tips formulas you know etc etc let me know in the comments and you know we'll get to that point and I'll make these videos for you so with all that being said what are you still doing looking at the video man go ahead and hit that like drop the comment and subscribe get up go buy a speaker go to Home Depot and start building some boxes and let me know how they go in the comments and man just get to work